Kumudini Pati, an independent researcher associated with the Center for Women's Studies, University of Allahabad. And we are taking up the subject of Women's Studies, Paper 15, The Stories the States Tell. And this is Module 20, which deals with Champion of Nonviolent Civil Resistance in India, Medha Patkar. We will tell you about the early life and education of Medha. Born on December 1st, 1954 in Bombay to social activist parents Vasant Khanolkar, a well-known freedom fighter and trade unionist and Indu Khanolkar who was heading a women's organization called Swadhar. Patkar had completed her BSc from Bruya College of Bombay. And she later on went on to study social work and she completed her MPhil on the theme of development in traditional societies. She had done her research in TISS, that is the Tata Institute of Social Sciences, Bombay. Medha Patkar basically was a person who had a deep feeling for marginalized sections of society. And so as she was doing her research, she took holidays. Whenever there was a vacation, she used to go and work with the people about whom she was doing research. She became deeply involved with issues of displaced people in the Narbada River Valley which spans the states of Gujarat, Maharashtra and Madhya Pradesh. And while she was studying for her PhD and doing her research on social inequality and social movements, she came to know about a judgment of a tribunal which had granted permission to build 30 mega dams, 135 medium sized and 3000 small dams in India. She began to involve herself with the cause of the Adivasi youth in Sabarkantha, Banaskanta and in other areas and started working with farmers also in the Narbada Valley. As she worked, she gained a lot of experience and she also started doing consultancy work for the integrated Child Development Services or Anganwadis for UNICEF. She contributed significantly to the improvement of the structure and the procedures which were being adopted by the scheme. She as a leader started a big movement in the name of Narbada Bachao Andolan, Save the Narbada Campaign and we will tell you about this whole campaign which started as an organization in 1985. Actually Medha was the one who had founded this organization and she was the main leader of the NBA. The NBA was doing a lot of research, dialogue and deliberation on the impact of the Narbada advocacy. That is what impact would the construction of Narbada Dam have on the people who were living in the area close to the dam. She saw that the people were being affected very much. They were being displaced, their livelihood was being snatched and so she started taking up issues related to the rehabilitation of those people living there and also about the loss of livelihood. So the World Bank finally acknowledged that its continued support to the Sardar Sarovar or the Narbada Dam was being proved to be disastrous for the people there and as well as the environment. So the World Bank finally decided that it would withdraw its support and funding from the project and it did so in 1994. Now Medha always used to say that this whole 
work that is going on in the name of the Narvada Valley project is the result of lopsided anti-people development plan. And it will only benefit the people who are rich and the benefits to the poor people will be very much less. Rather, they will be displaced and they will lose their livelihood. She was a committed campaigner for the cause of the displaced and she participated in numerous fora, which were some of them national and some of them international and told them about the atrocities against the helpless tribals and villages who were living in the area of the Narbada Valley. In 1999, she had to be forcefully removed from a nearly submerged village. This was Dom Khedi village. Actually, Medha had decided that they would sit there on a sit-in protest and let the water rise because of the construction of the dam. And as the water was rising, the women who were sitting with Medha were getting submerged in water. And this was why she had to be forcefully removed from that area. It was a protest against submergence of the villages because of this project. In March of 2006, again, she participated in a very long 20 day long hunger strike and she was here protesting against the decision of the authorities to raise the height of the dam. I may tell you here that now the dam has been completed and the gates have been closed. There are 30 gates there to the dam. They have all been closed and the water will rise as soon as the gates are open. And Medha has also told the government that when the waters rise, then the memorial which has been constructed there for Mahatma Gandhi and Kasturba Gandhi is going to be inundated with water and it is going to be first submerged because of raising the height of the dam. Partikar has been one of the leading activists of a powerful network of 250 mass-based organizations all over India. This is a platform which has been formed mainly by Medha Partikar and it is called the National Alliance of People's Movements or NAPM in short and she is the national convener of this organization. NAPM is involved in the struggle of people in at least 15 states of the country where human rights are being violated. She has been also taking up issues of human rights violations in other parts of the country and she is working towards a more people-centric kind of development paradigm which has more accountability and transparency at its core. She is a mass leader who is fighting to protect the civil rights of the people. So beyond the Narbada Valley, Medha Patkar has been playing a crucial role in the empowerment of people struggling to protect their civil and political as well as their economic, social and cultural rights in as many as 20 states of the country. Apart from extending support to such struggles, a few notable ones are against the eviction, the mass eviction of people from the Mumbai slums. She has also been taking up the issue or the cause of communities which are being affected and who are subject or victims of the anti-poor policies of the various states. And many of the struggles which she is directly leading are against the Tata Nano car plant in Singur. Everybody knows about the Singur struggle in West Bengal where there was a big movement against the then left front government and we all know that the Tata Nano car plant was 
shifted from there and went to Gujarat. She had also been fighting against the proposed chemical hub of the Salim group of Indonesia. This struggle was taking place in Nandigram. Actually, in Nandigram, the farmers were being displaced. Those farmers who were doing multi-cropping in that area, which was a very fertile area, was being taken by the Salim group of industries from Indonesia. And Medha Patkar went all the way, although she was arrested while she was going there, she went all the way to Nandigram. She was also conducting a struggle against the building of the Lavasa city, which is in Maharashtra. This Lavasa city that was coming up had total disregard for the environment, for the displacement of the people, and for the kind of job loss that was being caused by this kind of project. She also fought against the Kovada project in Srikakulam of Andhra Pradesh. She raised her voice against the Hira Nandini housing land scam. This was a 450 billion rupees scam, which was in 230 acres of land. And actually, this Hira Nandini housing scheme had said that it would be preparing houses for the poor people. That is, it would be some kind of affordable housing scheme. But actually, what was seen on the ground was that they were building houses for people who were rich and who were affluent. Then she also fought against the Golibar demolitions of slums in Mumbai. She fought against the nuclear plant which was coming up in Kalpakam and against the Kudankulam project, also against POSCO in Jagatsingpur and many other such projects which were anti-people. She also raised her voice against the ordinance which wanted to amend the Land Acquisition Act of 2013. Now while Medha was fighting for the poor people, for the marginalized, for those who were distressed, she was attacked and hounded by the state. Having led these struggles from the front, Medha Patkar herself was being subjected to a lot of police atrocity in many different states. She was attacked and severely beaten up by the mayor Amit Shah and other BJP goons in the Mahatma Gandhi Sabarmati Ashram in Ahmedabad in Gujarat. She was thrown to the ground and blows were rained on her head. She was dashed many times on the wall. And she said that it was a planned conspiracy to kill her. Actually, she was holding a peace meeting after the Gujarat riots or programs which were held in 2002. And it is strange that the police and the commissioner of police were all standing silently watching this going on and they were not even prepared to file a complaint. Now, Medha Patkar, although she has been attacked, she has been hounded, she remains a vehement crusader of non-violence. She believes that non-violence is the only way out to make oneself heard. And so, her ideal is Mahatma Gandhi. All the struggles which she has led so far have been peaceful struggles, democratic struggles, because she has been upholding the value of nonviolence. Now, she has made many policy level interventions also. It is not only that Medha has been involved with struggles which are outside the government system or outside the parliament. She has been involved with the rehabilitation and resettlement policy 2003-2006 and the bill of 2007. They were actually inspired and heavily drawn from the initial draft which was prepared by a small group which was led by Medha Patkar. She has also served as a commissioner to
to the World Commission of Dams. And she has been as a representative participant of the Union Commission for Human Rights and many other international bodies. So, Medha Patkar actually is propagating some kind of an alternative paradigm of development and technology. She says that whatever development and technology should do should not somehow create hardships for the common people. It should be people centric and the development should take care that the voice of the people who are involved in those areas, people who are living in those areas should be heard. So, the NBA has successfully adopted the micro hydel projects model which is a model of renewable indigenous and non-polluting energy. This can generate 5 kilowatts to 100 kilowatts of energy which can be suited to any home or school or hospital. She also thought that when she is doing such a lot for the people, maybe joining a political party would not be a bad idea. So, Medha decided to join the Aam Admi Party in January 2014. She had great hopes from the Aam Admi Party and she said she thought that the Aam Admi Party would actually be a party with a difference. It would work for the benefit of the common man. So, she contested on an ARP ticket from the Northeast Mumbai constituency. Of course, she had to lose the seat to Kirit Somaya of the BJP, who was with the, the BJP national leadership and the NCP came second and the AAP got 8.9 percent of the votes, but it came third. Now, Medha has been a recipient of many, many awards. She got the Right to Livelihood Award for the year 1991. This is also called an Alternative Nobel Peace Prize. She got the Goldman Environmental Award of 1992, the Green Ribbon Award for Best International Political Campaigner by BBC in 1995. She got the M. A. Thomas National Human Rights Award from Vigil India Movement in 1999 and she got a Human Rights Award from the Amnesty International as well. And so many other awards like the Mahatma Phule Award or the Mother Teresa Award for Social Justice in 2014. Now, Medha is constantly involved in people's struggle and she is now assessing the impact of various large scale development projects on different communities, on their livelihoods, on the environment and she is engaged in defending the democratic rights and the security of the common people. So, she is actually a crusader for human rights and she has been fighting against the ordinance which was brought about against the Land Acquisition Act of 2013. Also, Medha has been involved in some urban interventions like the Ghar Bachao, Ghar Banao Andolan in Mumbai. As we know, in Mumbai, a lot of people are still living in slums and they do not have pakka houses for themselves. So, Medha on the one hand has been fighting against demolition of those slum areas. On the other hand, she has also been propagating that they should be given permanent housing, that is they should have pakka houses where they can stay with security. And she has in this way helped thousands of slum household and she has fought for electricity, for water, for jobs, for toilets and for education of the people who are living in the slums.
Now when we conclude we have to say that although Medha is one of the leaders who is sometimes in a controversy, many people also criticize her, but she had left a faculty position in the Tata Institute of Social Sciences and given up her, her life for the movement, for the people, for those who are marginalized and those who are being displaced all over the country where big dams, big projects are taking their land and their space. So, we can say that Medha Patkar, whatever criticisms people may have of her, actually has been leading the NBA and the NAPM and it is due to the hard work that she has put in, the commitment that she shows and her followers that the tribal people and the poor people have actually been able to find some kind of space, a democratic space to fight for an alternative model of development and she has been exposing the corporate loot that is going on in the country and that has been given sanction by the powers that be. Thank you.